Satnam, Yogis and Yoginis, hello and welcome. Welcome back to one more stream. We're going to be talking today about the mind. We are in the mind course. Let me just check. Um, the chat is not showing something. Uh, well, if you are online, oh, there you are, Sadnan Sohail. Hello, Sadnan. Thank you for being here. I was checking whether actually I was connected or not because I was receiving an error, but now I see the messages, so I see that we are connected. And uh, thank you for being here. We're gonna go today into the. We're gonna continue with the mind course, and we have a, an interesting topic today to cover in relationship to the mind, the way that this is seen from the Kundalini Yoga perspective, the way that Yogi Bhajan talked about the mind. And, um, and so we, we have been exploring quite a bit already about the vision from Kundalini Yoga about the mind, particularly in relationship to the, these three aspects, the three functional minds, negative, positive, and neutral. You may remember this. Maybe if I show some of the diagrams that we saw, it will be easier to remember. But what we are going to see today is how the negative, positive, and neutral, the functional minds, are in relationship to the impersonal minds, the manas, ahankar, and buddhi, in order to create the different archetypes, personalities, and subpersonalities within us. So today is all about archetypes and subpersonalities and how we decide and think about things in order to operate in the world. Because uh, we did see in the last video, we, we were making a summary of how everything is connected, how everything is related, and we saw this manas, ahankar, buddhi. But we didn't talk about the negative, positive, and neutral. And you will notice that maybe you've thought about that, why is Isardas not mentioning it? And the reason is because it would have complicated things and uh, it's something that we're going to cover today. We're going to dedicate the whole video today. Saddam John, hello, welcome. Welcome to the stream. We're going to see how these impersonal aspects of the mind, manas, ahankar, and buddhi, when they are in relationship with our negative, positive, and neutral, they, they crisscross each other and they have an, a particular um, effect. So what's happening is that the manas, ahankar, and buddhi, let's, let's call that universal mind. That's, I'm, I'm going to say today is the way Yogi Bhajan spoke about this. And uh, we have a, also a book that talks about this. I will show the book a few times during today's talk. Um, the, way he, the, the, one, the, the way this book uh, talks about it is that let's utilize chitta as the universal mind. And let's say that that includes manas, ahankar, and buddhi, even though I already covered that this is like four different aspects and they are all connected in, in that particular way that chitta is consciousness. But okay, so these three aspects, manas, ahankar, and buddhi, they are manas being our relationship to the outside world, input and output, and our relationship to the, the, um, what we are receiving from the senses. And then, Chitta, sorry, uh, ahankar being the sense of who I am and how I, my sense of identity or feeling different from the others, but also what makes me different that, you know, that sense of ego of what I like, what I dislike, that's coming out of that sense of identity which is separated from the others, that would be ahankar, and buddhi being this sense of higher discernment and uh, wisdom that it's connected con with intuition as well, intuitive and wisdom, intuitive wisdom, we could call it. So that those would be the three impersonal aspects. And if you can notice, these three aspects are like kind of, we call them impersonal or universal because they are like out there, right? Like buddhi, the wisdom is something that is kind of given to us in a way. This intuitive discernment is something like a perception that we receive. Like we receive an intuition, like oh, okay, so that's kind of coming, kind of from the kind of coming from the outside, kind of. Manas is also in relationship to the outside. Yeah, it's kind of what is happening outside and how am I relating into the outside through my indriyas, karmindriyas, genindriyas, and then ahankar would be behind us in this, given this sense of identity. I'm separate from the from the universe, and that 
it's like the individualization of the soul, of the spirit. I'm going a little bit quick over these terms and these concepts because I've already dedicated a lot of time to explain them. And hopefully, if you have seen the other videos, then those things are quite clear. So I don't want to have to, you know, repeat myself too much. But we could see this individualization, the individualis oops, individualization of the spirit would be the, the higher self coming down into the real self. But in between, first of all, it passes through this false self, this false sense of identity, which is what we define as ego, linked to this individualization. Yeah, I'm feeling individual, feeling separate. All right, that was a, like a very, very short summary of Manas, Ahankar, and Buddha. Now, these three aspects which are coming from the outside, they are going to combine with these three tendencies from the inside called the personal or functional minds, negative, positive, and neutral. And when these three and three interact, there's going to be like a matrix, yeah? And, and something is going to be the result of, of that uh, product of those elements um, t touching each other, yeah. So when negative mind is going to meet manas, is going to produce a particular archetype within us. When negative mind is going to uh, be in contact with ahanka, is going to produce a different archetype. When negative mind crosses with buddhi, it's going to produce a different archetype. And and you can see this is very much like. Um, like a texture that is being woven. Let's start with the diagrams right away. So there is this three strings, impersonal strings descending upon us. And we could say that one is M, A, and B. This is Manas, Ahankar, and Buddhi. These are the the little letters that I used in this diagram, yeah, M, A, B, C being Chitta, which is connecting all of them through consciousness. So we have these three aspects that are kind of affecting us in personal aspects of the mind, and they are going to crisscross with three personal aspects. Mm, let's not call them as personal. Uh, let's call them, yeah, it's three personal minds, three negative, positive, and neutral. And the crossing of these three with these three are going to create nine points. And these are going to be nine archetypes or the way that Yogi Bhajan calls them, these are going to be nine aspects of our mind, archetypes or aspects. And they, this is going to be like um, nine different ways of relating to what is happening to the outside world, yeah, and inside within me, nine different ways of thinking about it, let's say. Nine different archetypal ways of thinking about it. And we're going to see which these nine are, and then we're going to see that these nine are going to be multiplying by three, and then I'm going to be multiplying by three, and we're going to end up with 81 at the end. But we're going to go slowly. Let's not go too quickly. Yeah? So far, so good? Yeah? All right. So let's start right away. Oh, by the way, uh, if you want to find more information on this, you can find on this book, this book is called The Mind, its projections and multiple facets. It was written by Guru Charan Singh, utilizing lectures from Yogi Bhajan. And so the first part of the book is the lectures. And then uh, from the middle forward, a little bit more than the middle, then they come the 81 facets, which we're going to go slowly into this. And then, at the end, there's a meditation guide, because for every one of these, not the 81, but every one of the 27 and the nine aspects, there is a meditation that we can practice to work on that. Because 
one thing is identifying how the mind works, which is what we have been doing so far in this course, and identifying when it can be of service and when it can be a problem. And another thing is, well, let's deal with it now. How do we deal with the mind? And remember, there is a number of things that we need to do for every one of the different uh, functional or impersonal minds. So, for example, I mentioned the negative mind. Uh, when we were talking about the negative mind, that would be this one over here. And when, the day that we talked about this, we put it in, in relationship to the diagram of the levels of consciousness. Now, in relationship to the negative mind, I mentioned that negative mind is not evil, it's not wrong, there's nothing wrong with it, it's just saying no. And saying no is a way to protect yourself from things that you don't want or things that can be dangerous. So the negative mind is just protecting and it's just saying no to things and, and it can be useful for elimination and for avoiding things which are unhealthy and toxic. So it's a very instinctive and survival aspect of ourselves. Because it's something survival aspect is encoded in the parts of the brain that is more subconscious, so we don't have to think about it. We can just say immediately, instinctively, say no to, which means that this is in the subconscious. However, there's a problem with that. The problem is that in the subconscious, we tend to throw a lot of garbage. And the garbage that goes here is going to be feeding these kind of monsters. Yeah. So negative mind, protective mind, what do we need to do? We need to clean it. We need to clean the negative mind. The positive mind, let's remember, positive mind was the one that says yes. Is this an opportunity? It says yes, let's go. So if the negative is more protective, the positive is more projective. It wants to project you forward, move on and advance and grow and glow and you know expand and conquer the world, right? So positive mind is something that is um, towards the outside, is expanding, is action-oriented, is affirming, is reinforcing, and he wants to help. The positive mind simply wants to help. However, however, if the negative mind linked to the subconscious is very dirty, the thoughts that come from the negative mind are going to be like, no, 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 let's just stop ourselves, don't do this, don't do this. And the positive mind wanting to help is going to reinforce the, the negativity that is coming out of the negative mind that is going to be stopping you. So the positive mind, which wants to project and affirm and confirm, we need to choose what we want to affirm. We need to choose how is it going to project us. And, and for that, in its training. Because otherwise, this is like a wild horse and nobody's holding the reins. It just goes wherever it goes. So if there is something out of here coming in the form of insecurity or fear, then the positive mind is going to expand it, it's going to expand and project that fear outwards into the outside. And uh, it's going to be very damaging. So we want to train it, hold the horses, yeah, hold the reins from the positive mind, hold it so that um, we can choose how to direct that positive mind. Satnam, GIY, hello, good morning, good morning. We are we're talking about the mind from the Kundalini Yoga perspective today. Welcome to the stream. Please, anyone who is online, just feel free to interact with me, ask questions, or just say how you feel about what I'm talking about today. It's, a, it's an important topic, the topic of archetypes. Maybe I should have put it in the title, archetypes, yeah? So, the negative mind, we need to clean it. The positive mind, we need to train it. The neutral mind, the neutral mind is there to listen to the negative and the positive, listening every both voices and then out of both, choosing, out of both, choosing what is the most elevated action that we can do and what is the choice that we're going to take. So it's, um, it requires consciousness. It's about choice-oriented, not action-oriented, and not protection-oriented, like the negative and the positive, but it's choice-oriented and, and should be linked to consciousness. And it's very sensitive. And uh, the thing with that, the problem with that, 
is that this sensitivity and this awareness and this sensibility sometimes is too much and then it closes. And then even though neutral mind should be linked to consciousness, many, many times consciousness is trapped, often by the other minds, and then it just falls asleep. So the problem with the neutral mind is when this guy is asleep. So we need to wake up. So a negative mind has to be cleaned, positive mind has to be trained, neutral mind has to be awakened. Now, let's remember that the other three aspects also had their challenge. Yeah, Manas, being in relationship to the outside, and being the senses and the pre-processing and the filtering of the inputs and the outputs, the problem is that often this is going to be linked to our memory and our impressions. So whatever has been stored in our memory is going to affect how we see the world. So we have to check how we are receiving the information, how we are processing the information, and we have to also check that we are not going towards the outside too much. So pratihar, going back inwards. So that's manas. But when it is properly balanced and it, the filter is not too strong and we are not distracted too much, manas is a relationship to the outside world and that's necessary. So that's also healthy, right? A hankar, the sense of who I am or thinking that I am the doer, this, this aspect of the I amness and likes and dislikes linked to the ego, on one side, it's great because we feel that we exist. We feel an individual soul, one drop of water in the ocean. And that's necessary to be able to say, I am that. You have to have a sense of identity. So that's a hunger is necessary. However, when it starts to be tainted by likes and dislikes and preferences and, and what I enjoy and what I don't, then I start looking for pleasure, avoiding pain. And then that's how I end up in a life that is pursuing pleasure rather than happiness, right? and temporal pleasure, right? And that's uh, the basis of ego. And that ego is going to be um, dominating the actions of manas, it's going to be commanding manas, and that's going to be, it's going to create an unhealthy link here. So we have to deal with that, the one thinking that I am the one who does things, that I am the one who chooses if I like or I dislike something, and rather reinforce the other aspect of a hunger, which is the I amness of it. So that's what to do with vanas, that's what to do with hankar. Buddhi is the discernment, the wisdom, and it's also the intellect, and, but also making choices. And with Buddhi, very similar to neutral mind, Buddhi means awakened, so very similar to neutral, Buddhi is often asleep, and it doesn't, it doesn't discern what the ahankar is telling it, whether we should go into action or not through manas, and then it doesn't make decisions, or it stays paralyzed, it stays stopped. And, or maybe it doesn't receive the intuition or it cannot see clearly which way to do it. Maybe there's various options, but it doesn't see which one is best. So it doesn't voice their opinion, the, the, not the opinion, but the choice. It doesn't make a choice. And then a hunger ends up commanding manners. So that's what to do with Buddhi, waking up and aware and alert and conscious and open to receive the intuition to know how to align ourselves to decide what to do. So, a little summary of negative, positive, neutral, manas, ahankar, and buddhi, and what did we have to do with every one of these. But these things are going to be combining, and when they combine, they are going to produce these nine aspects that I was talking about. So, as we go into these nine aspects, let's, um, let's explore it in a big table. So these are going to be the nine archetypes or the nine aspects. I'm, I'm going to write here archetypes because uh, I wrote here aspects already. So these are going to be these nine archetypes. And uh, let's establish that this is going to be neutral, negative mind. This is going to be positive mind. This is going to be neutral mind. And this is going to be Manas and Hankar 
and body. These are the, these are, this is the grid that we are going to be filling in today. And um, so when they, when they uh, cross with each other, I'm going to write in blue the relationship between these two. All right, so if we look at the book, let's take an example, yeah? It says, uh, well, by the way, there's also meditations for the negative, the positive, and the neutral mind. These are quite nice meditations. Maybe someday we will do them. And it's saying, well, aspect one is going to be called the defender, and that's negative mind times manas. And we're not going to read the whole book, but uh, just to give an example, yeah? So this aspect looks at everything based on how it may affect you. It looks at everything based on how it may affect you. So think about it for a moment. If this is negative times manas, yeah, this is what is called a defender, Remember, manas is the protection. It says no. Oh, sorry, I, that, uh, negative mind I meant. Protection. I didn't mean this. This was a mistake. Yeah? The positive mind was the projection. Yeah? And the neutral mind is the choice. Yeah, evaluating these two, what the protective mind and the projective mind want to say and choosing what to do. So these are the three. So defender is like the negative mind. Okay, let's, let's take it like this. Mana, something comes from the outside. Something is coming in. Yeah. yeah. And as it goes into manas, here, while it's here in manas, we can have a negative, positive, or neutral relationship to that already, just as it comes. Already a negative, positive, or neutral. Now, the negative, re uh, like the negative immediate reaction, we could say to it, would be wait, what is coming? What is coming? Is it something that I need to protect myself from? So it's basically trying to defend you. Yeah? From what something is coming, it's going to try to de defend. Does it make sense? Yeah? Hopefully, it's very clear. I see a few messages. I struggled a lot due to childhood trauma to stay in Patiahara. Senses are distracted by environment, noises, sounds. It's getting much better as my system sensitizes. Spinal breathing tends to help sensitivity and meditation. Are there other practices for this part of dharana? What do you mean by spinal breathing? How is that practice done? I've seen a few different kinds of spinal breathing, so I wonder what you are doing. Are there other practices for this, for the dharana, for the concentration? So I understand that you're asking, are there other practices for the concentration because you are feeling distracted, right? Um, well, I think it's a common, almost universal disease, we could say, nowadays, yeah? Especially with how many things are there specifically designed to distract us? I mean, they have been designed like this. You look at the uh, social media and it has been, neuroscientists have taken place in how to design the apps to make it so that you are more addicted to them. And these apps are all about short-term focus. So it's like, even, you know, these TikToks or yeah, this, there's very short messages and then you chup, and then you chup, and then you chup. It's like very, very short attention span and next, 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 like a living in an immediate m moment of transition from one to the next. If you look at movies, you look back 20, 30 years ago and um, I don't know, well, some may be an exaggeration, but somehow I'm just seeing Taxi Driver now in my head and uh, there is this very long scene. I think there is a corridor. He's on the phone, I think. And then there is the camera is slowly moving like that and going all around. And then there's just like maybe a minute or two minutes take. If you look at the movies nowadays, every two or three seconds, there is a cut 
and there's another scene, another scene, another scene. And maybe there is a dialogue and then they are focused on the two people, but often they are changing from one face to the other face, from one face to the other face. It's incredible. If you look at advertisements in the TV, it's like less than one second and they change, 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 because it's proven that if they stay too long with the, with the camera focused on one place, people skip it or they do zapping, you know, in the, with the TV. But... Um, so I, I am very aware that doing a, a video in YouTube that is two hours long, like I do, is, is not very helpful for the algorithm, right? YouTube doesn't like this kind of very, very long videos. And uh, it, it would be much better if I was more hip and moving and short and <laughs> immediate, right? Uh, this is what everything around us is designed to, to stimulate and to move, no? Drink coffee, you know. Um, drink uh, anything that has caffeine and stimulates you and moves you and keeps you moving from one attention to the other. Eat sugar, which is also very stimulating. Children, by the, the time they come into the school, they have received such a quantity of sugar. You know, many cereals have an exorbitant quantity of sugar in them. You give them some cereal, some milk, and you think, that's a nice breakfast, right? But if you look in the box, sometimes it's like 20% sugar or, or more. It's crazy. And then you want the children to stay still and focus. And then because they cannot do it physically with all the overstimulation, then you are going to diagnose them ADHD and then you're going to start medicating them. Well, that, that's, a no, that's a good recipe for disaster, isn't it? But that's the, that's the modern times we live in. So um, just, I would say, G, G-I-Y, I would say start with paying attention to the diet and the habits because that's already going to decide whether you're going to be too overly distracted or not. And then from then... Um, is a matter of training the mind to go back to one center, something like Tratakam. That's really, really helpful, you know, looking at one point and keeping the eyes focused on one point. You're writing either breathing chakras, lam, bam, ram, yeah, up and down the spine, or just moving energy up and down using locks and chin up and down, maybe using some yamas between its 12 rounds. All right, that's good. Uh, don't forget to move the body as well, yeah? Physical, we need to move physically because the a, a mental distraction is often a fire in the mind. If you can bring the fire down into the body and move the body, it's going to quieten that fire and it's going to be easier to be more focused. That's why pranayama and meditation are very useful after some exercises and it's going to be more balancing. So I would say approach it from that, from that place. So let's go back to this uh, drawing, that we, this diagram. So as manas, something comes into the senses and the negative mind immediately is trying to defend us. It's going to say, is this bad for us? Should we defend ourselves from it or not? Well, um, let's, take, let's, let's continue in manas. Yeah? Our relationship to what we see outside, what we see, what we taste, what we smell, what we hear and how we're going to produce music and sound and you know what is going to be our interaction with the world. Let's stay with manas. Now, the negative mind was how to defend myself. The positive mind, manas, is going to be this aspect of ourselves that is going to try to project what we are inside, how we feel inside, what we are doing inside, into this outside world. So it's more into the output, and it's going to want to be uh, creating something um, interesting, some like something that is people will say, oh, that was made by Ardas. So b basically, that is the artist in us. So we, we the artist doesn't see the world as something to defend from, but as a place to express who we are in a creative way. Does it make sense? I think it does. Yeah. So. Manas in relationship to the positive mind. So when we are in this bubble with the positive, we could say there could be a negative, positive, and neutral, negative, positive, neutral, negative, positive, neutral. Now, when you are here crisscrossing with the positive, then we are more artistic in our more artistic sense. 
Yes. Now, when we are in this bubble, but in a more neutral aspect, we're not trying to defend ourselves, we're not trying to project our, our artist creations, but we're going to be seeing the world and deciding how to relate to the world, what to do with the world. This is, this is the aspect that we call the strategist. strategy. So finding a strategy, remember neutral mind is choice, so choosing what to do in relationship to the outside or also in a strategy on how to receive things from the outside in, to, towards you. Satnam Sandesh, hello, namaskar, welcome to the stream, hello. We are talking about archetypes of the mind today, welcome. So the, these are the connections between manas and the negative, the positive and the neutral mind, the defender the artist and the strategist. And um, all right, so some, and, and by the way, we all have all these archetypes, right? So Jenny is saying, could you say, who am I in the neutral mind? Sure, we're going to go to a hunker neutral in a moment. Sure, sure, sure. So we have seen negative, positive, and neutral in manas. Now we're going to see, if you're talking about who am I, like the sense of I amness, like the hankar sense, we're going to see negative, positive, and neutral in here. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly what you mean, or you are referring to a process of self-inquiry, but um, let's, see, let's see when we come to neutral mind in the sense of a hankar, let's see if, it, if it's what you meant. Yeah, Because who I am could be a hankar in the most elevated sense, simply the feeling of being, I am, or it can be our ego. So we have to be careful on how that manifests. Because that, that's also something I haven't mentioned, but is worth mentioning. These three archetypes, they can be more karmic or more dharmic. They can be balanced or imbalanced, right? So we, have, we know that there is manas, it can be karmic and dharmic. We, we know the negative mind can be karmic or dharmic. So we, ha we know there can be problems in manas, there could be problems with the negative mind, and these two crossing, that means there could be problems with the defender as well. So defender can be, let's say, healthy or unhealthy, it can be karmic or can be dharmic, the same with the artist, the same with the strategist. So if you think about the problems with manas, and you think about the problems with the positive mind, putting them together, you're going to find the problems of the artist. If you, if you think about the the healthier aspects of manas and the healthier aspects of the positive mind, the more dharmic versions of them mixing together produce the artist, which is a dharmic artist. Yeah, hopefully that makes sense. So don't think this is going to be great. I mean, the artist is always positive and the defender negative, maybe. It's positive and negative in the sense that it's connected to the negative and positive mind. But remember, negative mind is not bad. Positive mind is not good. This one is protective, this one is projective. It's just, we call them negative and positive because the one says no, it's defending. This one says mm, yes, because it's contributing to the world in an artistic way. But maybe the artist is going to be a, a problem for you. So as, as, as we are developing this, this diagram, as this is going to be more evolved, we're going to find that sometimes some of these aspects, some of these nine aspects or nine archetypes, they are going to be wonderful, they are going to be really stable, and I'm really good at defending, but I'm a crappy artist. Or maybe I'm really good at artist, but I'm a crappy defender, right? Maybe I'm, I'm really good at producing art, and I go into the world and I show how my art, but then if somebody criticizes you, then you cannot defend your position, you cannot defend your art, you, you get paralyzed, and then you are really always in challenge with other people because you're always like fighting with others and you're always losing, let's say. So one of the archetypes could be balanced and powerful and strong and the other one could be very weak. Or you can be a very good artist but not have a good strategy to bring it out into the world. And then that could be damaging for your career as well. So we all have these archetypes and we could all aim to balance all of them, to find uh, the, right, the right mixture of the right approach with manas and negative and manas and positive, manas and neutral, so that every one of these aspects of these archetypes 
it's healthy, it's balanced, it's powerful, and that's going to bring us to success in life in general. Isn't that something that we want? Yeah, isn't that something appealing, something that we may want? Because we may think, well, I, I don't want to work on this aspect. I will just keep working on the others. But then you keep finding challenges in life. Then you're going you're gonna to keep using, um, keep finding yourself in the middle of fights that you don't want to be yourself in. But that's because your defender aspect is not being activated in some way. So you end up losing something, yeah? All right, hopefully that's clear. Please, if, 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 there is concepts, if there is any concept that is not clear, just ask. So, um, so we will find, let's take the defender, for example, as I'm talking about these different aspects. Let's take the defender, which is more clear now, being the negative mind plus manas, and let's keep reading. This was all about, looks at everything based on how it may affect you from the negative mind. How will it harm me or direct me away from what I am trying to do? So it defends. The manas influence means things seem to come from the outside, from impressions of the senses. You remember? Yeah, something from the outside causing impressions, yeah? It is a practical sequence-oriented men mental pattern. It wants to know how to deal with it now. What is the action needed? But it doesn't go into action. Going into action is more something a projective action. This is something from the positive mind. At the moment, it's just sensing the threat. Yeah? Is it a personal threat directed at you? Or is it an accident? Or is it a pure, excuse me, a pure act of nature? Or a co coincidence? Each of these cases is going to have a different response. And now, it's already referring to this nine times three. Yeah? So it's not, there's not just one defender within me. There's going to be actually nine times three different kinds of um, uh, aspects. So in the case of the defender, it's going to be three different kinds of defenders. And we will see this in a little, in a little while. Yeah? But let's stay with the defender. So this projection, as it is called, it could be too strong. And, and look, the problems with, the, with everything in life, it's always three kinds of problems. There's too much to litter all the wrong kind. It's always these three aspects. And in this case of defender, there's going to be the aspect of the defender when it's too much, when it's too little, or when it's the wrong kind. And then, if it's not the, any, either of these three, maybe we can find the defender as a balance. Yeah, the defender is being balanced. So identifying when it is too strong or too weak is going to be very useful. If the defender aspect is too strong, meaning is karmic, is not healthy, yeah? you may appear to be rigid, reactive, and over-dominant. You fail to see your own contribution to the situation and react quickly, but without a detailed assessment for long-term implications. There is no detailed assessment. Look, that's more of the strategist, right? At this moment, if, this, if you are too strong in the defender, and, and by the way, the, the negative mind is the first mind which activates. Then it goes up, yeah? So if this one is too strong, it's going to damage the impact that it has and damage the consequences because you have no strategy for the future. So you have to be careful of what's happening here because that's going to have an impact everywhere, which doesn't mean anything. You could be balanced here and imbalanced here, right? But if you are imbalanced here, then that's going to spoil everything that comes from there. Remember, negative, positive, neutral, going in that direction. So, um, you may appear to be rigid, reactive, or overdominant, and you fail to see your own contribution to the situation and react quickly without a detailed assessment for long-term implications. There is, no, there is no assessment, there is no strategy for the future. You will also be very self-critical about your performance. Self-critical about your performance. Because that's saying no. That's saying no. Self-critical is saying no, but to yourself. So rather than saying no to the outside, to the things that you don't want outside, you end up saying no to things from your inside. And um, 
to, negative to your self-critical to your to your performance, but also feeling that you don't have any capacity to defend, for example, that which is going to bring you actually to the other aspect when it is too weak. So when you say no to your capacity to defend, then you become too weak or underdeveloped. Then you lack survival instincts and then uh, to defend you against the ill motives of others, you become victim to situations where your efforts will not have beneficial re reciprocity. Excuse me. You become victim to situations where your effort, efforts will not have a beneficial reciprocity. Yeah, so it's not going to be in your benefit. And you lack the level of detail checking that prevents errors before they happen. Yeah. So, look, what he's saying is, when it is too weak, is it because it's a problem from the negative mind? Or is it because it's a problem of manas? So he's first going through the negative mind. When is the negative mind too weak? Then you lack survival instincts to defend against the ill motives of others, right? And then you become victim to situations. But um, when it's a problem of manas, it's not a problem of negative mind, it's a problem of manas, then you can see how it says you lack the, de the level of detail checking that prevents errors before they happen. Why? Why, why is that? Because... Manas is the perception of the outside. So if manas is not strong enough, you're, gonna, you're not going to see the details that are going to be important for you to activate the defending mechanism. So you miss, you miss out on some very important detail that you should be activating the defender, and then that's going to cause some trouble. And then you are too weak in your defense. Yeah, Makes sense? So when it is too strong, it could be too strong in the manas, it could be too strong in the positive mind or uh, yeah, the combination of both. When it is too weak, is it too weak in manas? Is it too weak in negative? Too weak in both. And it doesn't say here, but I'm going to add the other one, yeah? Is it too little, too much, or the wrong kind? So the wrong kind could also be like in manas, paying attention to the wrong kind of information. This is kind of like what GIY was asking. We get distracted. My senses are distracted by the environment. And then, then how can I know what I have to defend myself from? Or anything else, or be the artist, or whatever, yeah? But, um, or the strategist, right? But I don't sense what is happening clearly because my senses are going from one place to another. I'm distracted from one to another. So remember... Too little, too much, or the wrong kind. So the wrong kind of attention in your manners to one thing or another, looking at here, looking at here, or the wrong kind of action into the world, that's also going to be a problem for the defender aspect. And also the wrong kind of negative mind, also saying no, but saying no to the wrong things. Yeah, Negative mind says no because it defends, but if you say no to the wrong kind of things, then that's a problem. It's not just a it's not just a problem when you don't say no enough or when you say no too much, but it's also a problem when you say no to the things which are beneficial to you. So some th somebody is offering you help or something healthy and you are saying no to that because maybe you are scared or your habits or whatever, then that's the wrong kind of no. Okay, so too little, too much or the wrong kind and it can go into the negative mind, it can go into the, into the manners and those three problems and three problems. It's also nine kind of problems that we can have for every one of these nine aspects. Now it's becoming complicated, right? Not so much. I think it's clear. But uh, but yeah, too little, too much, the wrong kind. Too me, too little, too much, the wrong kind. Three problems with manas. Three problems with negative mind. And the three times the three. That's nine different kind of ways that we mess up when we activate the defender and the artist and the strategy because that's going to happen in every one of them so we have to be aware of these nine things now when it is balanced when it is dharmic it's just that we just call it balanced but when it is imbalanced then it can be those too much too little or the wrong kind i think i think it's clear so what happens when it is balanced 
Well, when it is balanced, you deliver strong, focused actions that enjoy challenged. You act, but always with a cover and a backup plan. Yeah, that's your defense. The soldier gives you quick action. The, well, now he's now he's going into the three nine times three. He's gonna go into three different ways. Yeah, that that this is gonna manifest. We're gonna go into that later after we see the whole diagram because I don't want to overload. This can be very overloading. But let's say that you have a problem with this aspect, with the defender aspect, then the, there is a meditation here that you could practice. It's called core alignment meditation. So it's going to align this aspect, this aspect, this core aspect. It's going to align it to keep it balanced. Yeah. Hopefully it makes sense. I'm trying to explain the book, but in indifferently, I mean, maybe you don't want to buy the book. Maybe you don't want to have to go into so much detail on how every little aspects of my archetypes in my brain work. And you don't have to. You don't have to do that. It's just being aware of how this works, knowing that we have these different aspects, that we have a negative mind, a positive mind, a neutral mind. A manas and a hankara and a buddhi, yeah, all that within the realm of chitta. And which are the problems of each one of these? And how do they become a problem with being too much, too little, the wrong kind? Every one of these. And how they relate to each other. Then you can go and check yourself. How is my manas? How is my ahankar? How is my buddhi? How is my negative? How is my positive? How is my neutral? Is, are they balanced? Or are they not in balance? And what we will find is that most often in life, we have spent our whole lives developing one of these archetypes or two or three of these archetypes. And we have neglected the others. And that neglect has caused us a lot of suffering and we didn't realize. And this is the key. It's not about the book. It's not about the meditations from the book. It's about understanding that all these aspects from ourselves need to be balanced. And if we don't balance them, that's going to create challenges, difficulties, and we are going to create karma from that. So we want to avoid that, right? So we could just check individually whether every manas and a hankar and a buddhi is balanced, but when we are into operating into the archetypes, it's much more clearly. Because just to see if your manas is balanced, what, how do I do that, right? But when you check, how is my defender? How do I defend? It, how is your defense? I ask, ask yourself, am I, am I, do I have a healthy defense mechanism in myself? Or I just let anything in? If anybody says anything, any criticism, you just take it, oh, and then you start collapsing. Or you overcharge, and then you are like, Wah! and you start fighting with the other I mean, how is your defender mechanism? Jiawa says, if we purify what comes into our field, yeah, that would be the manas, yeah, what we receive, yeah, what we are seeing, content, food, etc., which quietens the mind, but that does not mean we are necessarily balanced if we cannot control always what comes into the field. We cannot, we cannot purify, well, we can purify as much what we choose to allow things to get inside of us. So, we can choose what is being the input through manas, let's say. So you can choose what kind of music you listen to. You cannot choose what kind of food do you eat. You can choose what kind of companies do you company do you keep, your friends and, and your sangat. Now, it's true what you're saying. There will be things which are always outside of our control. Now, we, we can we underestimate our capacity to choose things uh, in many ways, that like um, what kind of company do we keep, the food that we eat. These things, you know, how many hours do we sleep, these habits. Very often, we pretend that we are fine and we just don't, don't look at that. But how many people are sincerely looking at their diet, sincerely looking at their habits, and trying to find as balanced as they can with that? Now, if you are if you are balanced in all these things that you are, that are under your control, when th something comes that is not under your control, 
you're going to be stable enough to be able to deal with it. And deal with it may mean maybe you have to do something, maybe activate a defender, maybe you don't have to do anything and just let it pass. But if you are balanced, you're going to be able to see and decide what to do with what's coming from Manas. We're going to see the other aspects from Manas. Um, so I, we already saw, sorry, we already saw them. So something comes from the outside and is something that I can control. All right. What do I have to do? Is, am I in danger? Do I have to defend? Is it something that I can express my artistic creativity anyway? Even if it's just like, I'm not in danger, right? And it's out of my control. Fine. But can I be project my art in some way and make a strategy from there? Right? The defender and the artist are going to activate and the strategy is going to choose. Do I have to do anything? Maybe I don't have to do anything and then I don't have to react. If I don't react, I'm not going to generate karma. And if I'm going to act, let's act consciously so that we act from a dharmic place. Yeah, if it makes sense. You're saying, I could live like a brahmacharya, but tomorrow I need to reintegrate to a world and not be able to balance the senses. Yes, if you, if you live like a brahmachari, if I understand you correctly, if you live like a brahmacharya, like a renunciate, right? Like in the sense of uh, like an, uh, the ascetic path of yoga, like you remove yourself from the world, you go into a cave, and then why do you do that? Because maybe in the isolation of the cave is easier to work on yourself and less distractions. Certainly there's going to be less distractions, but... There's distractions from the outside. You're going to still find distractions from the inside. But the problem is you go into the cave because you don't want to deal with things that are outside of your control. But in the cave, it's very difficult to progress as well. And we talked about the cave. There's another satsang we did another, another day a few weeks ago about our desire to go into the cave. Yeah. Now, if you want to come out of the cave, as soon as you reintegrate to the world, like you are saying, how are you going to deal with everything that is coming into your senses that is not under your control? Because in the cave is very easy because there is no outside stimuli. But as soon as you come out, then you find the world again. That's why we say if you do meditation like going into a cave, as soon as you come out of meditation, you're going to be confronted with the outside, the real world out there, right? I'm not saying that the inside world is not real, but I'm saying... As soon as you come out of meditation, you're going to have the same problems you had before you went into meditation. So meditation cannot be seen as a means of escape. It cannot be seen like I'm going to retreat into my cave to avoid the things that I cannot control. Because as soon as you come out of meditation, you're going to be in front of those things again. Meditation should be like, am I going to stabilize myself? Is my core strong enough? Is it balanced? So that when you come out, you can see what's happening and you can choose whether you're going to defend, you're going to be an artist, you're going to strategize what you're going to do and choose if you have to do anything even or I don't have to do anything. And then from that choice, then operate in the world. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's what meditation should be about. How bringing yoga into the life, not doing meditation like an escape. A yogi is one who is in this state of consciousness all day. Yeah? And yoga is not a practice that you do one hour in the morning and that's it. No, that's you are doing some practice. You are doing some yoga, but you're not a yogi. right? A yogi is the one who is integrating it into his or her identity. And now it's part of your identity to behave in that way. Looking for that union, that yoga, but constantly in everything that you do, even when something that is presented in front of you and you have no control over that. Because remember, even if you are not in control of that, we are all one. So we are connected in some way to whatever is happening outside as well. Yeah. All right. So those were the three different archetypes and we're going to see the sub-personalities associated to or sub like archetypes, which are gonna, we're going to call them in a different way. There's a different name. We're going to see those as well. 
But um, before that, let's carry on with this diagram, with this, um, not diagram, yeah, it's a uh, grid, this grid. We've seen this, manas in relationship to, to what is happening in the outside world with the negative, positive and neutral. Now, this goes into a hunker. Very useful, thank you. Why you do? Good. I'm glad. I'm glad it's useful. So now it goes inside to the hunker. And now a hunker is also going to have a connection from the negative, the positive, and the neutral mind. And that's going to be different. Remember, a hunker is the sense of I am, my individuality, a hunker, sensing that I am, but also a hunker, I am the doer. So thinking that you are the one who is doing things, right? So it's, it's about action, but it's also about what you like and you dislike. So linked to the ego and your preferences and seeking pleasure and avoiding pain and so on and so forth. Where is my blue pen? Here. Okay. So, if we go into a hunker and we, we face it from the negative mind, this is what's called a manager. Well, I didn't... I'm not going to read every, every one of these, but because I read a defender, let's read the, the a hunker manager as well. Let's see what the book has to say. Tum. Wait a moment. Here it is. Aspect two, by the way, this is if you if you ever use the book and you want to check, they number it like this. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Even though from a numerologic perspect perspective, I wouldn't look at these numbers like like the numbers. I, it's just to, a way to number them, yeah? Don't look at them like numbers themselves. But anyway, manager, let's go. So negative mind times a hunger. This aspect defends and preserves the balance of your identity. Yeah, hunger is identity. Uh, negative mind is defense and, and protection. Do you remember protection? So defends and preserves the balance of your identity and your projected roles under the pressure of actions and under the influence of the expectations of others. Expectations of others because. The hunker, who I am, my identity, it's, it's often very connected to how we see ourselves in relationship to others and how we expect others to see us, so how we want to show ourselves to others. So the influence of the expectations of others is going to be um, creating some pressure in the relationship between negative mind and a hunker, particularly in a hunker. Yeah? It actively sets boundaries in relationships. Set boundaries because negative mind says no. So no is no. Up until here, from here onwards, no. Yeah, this is the limit. No. So negative mind is about setting boundaries. And a hunker being my identity and identifying myself in relationship to others, then this is about boundaries in relationships. So if anybody has problems in setting boundaries for relationships, this is the aspect that we need to work on, right? So this is, this is how we utilize these tools finding out what, what is a challenge for us, and then doing some meditation to work on that aspect. Okay. The issue will be insecurity and distract of appearance of others. So how is people seeing me? Yeah? And why is it insecurity? Because the no, remember, one of the problems with the negative mind is that it turns against, against us and it starts to say no towards ourselves. And then we're going to start saying, oh, I'm not good enough for how people are going to see me. Yeah, I'm not beautiful enough. I'm not tall enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not whatever. It's not enough, meaning no, right? So the negative mind linked to a hunger, linked to my ego is going to say I'm not good enough. And remember, ego 
is not just to feel superior to others. That's one particular kind of ego. Another ego is feeling inferior to others. So this no to yourself, that's a very classical um, position of insecurity and um, needing validation, needing approval, needing others to see you, needing, 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 needing. That's negative mind because there is a no, there is an emptiness, so you need something from the outside. And you hope to affirm, that would be the positive, yeah? You hope to affirm your identity, but because you don't have the positive there, you're in the negative, then you hope others affirm your identity. So you dress other the others say, oh, how beautiful you look. Or you are posting in social media hoping to get more likes. And if today you got only 30 likes and yesterday you were getting 50, today you're going to feel horrible. So that's a, that's a bad byproduct of the negative mind linked to the hunker. Make sense? Yes? <laughs> I'm translating some of these things from this book. They should be updated to the new era of social media. Yeah? So the issue with, it, with being security and distract of appearance to others and he wants to know what is really going on, what is your intention? Yeah. Sometimes I have to be I have to be frank. I am sometimes not very I mean the titles don't help me much. But if you understand what it means, then it makes sense. Yeah? If you understand what I'm if you're following what I'm saying, it makes sense. Maybe the title sometimes doesn't make so much sense. But the explanation will hopefully help. Too weak, too strong, the wrong kind. Remember? Okay, too strong. You act rigid in a desperate search for the rules to make order out of everything. Once you have the rules, you can manage and act perfectly. And you act well at work, but harbor a strong resentment if you don't have personal material and security to show for the efforts. So remember, you're waiting for approval from others and um, you are insecure and then you become too strong in your ahankar to overcompensate for that insecurity. I mean, you can see this very often. Like bullies in school, bullies are very insecure people, but they try to reaffirm their self-security by, by putting down others and then pushing others down. Uh, you can you can see a lot of bullying in social media as well. If a person is healthy and feels safe and secure within, they don't need to go around putting others down. So, when you see somebody over criticizing others and like being very judgmental and so on, it's because they are there is a strong insecurity within and probably a feeling of insufficiency, insufficiency, insufficiency. Something like that. <laughs> Sorry. And um, the same standards and rules that they put on others, they impose them on, on, the, on themselves. And they are generally very, very hard on themselves as well. And the negative mind is like, it's very rigid in that sense. If it's too weak, you can feel overwhelmed, lose track of the rules, feel that the world ignores your priorities, and you become self critical and sad. You look around for other order rather than starting from your own internal center. Sometimes it has a barrier to joining emotionally. Okay. Let's let's um I'm not sure it's I'm not sure it's helping much reading it, reading from the book. So let's put it like that. My ahankar, my sense of identity, yeah? My ahankar. And the negative mind. Too weak. What could it be? It could be that my sense of identity is too weak and let's connect it to my ego. So if if it's my if it's very weak, I'm gonna define how I am and who I am by what others see in me. Yeah? And then and then the negative mind becomes very critical of myself according to what others see in me. So that's an, an, a too strong um, putting too much weight on what others, in my relationship to others, on what others feel about me, and not enough weight on myself. So that's weak, weak, a hunker, 
and then and then you can become too strong in your negative mind. So you, your your hunger can be very weak, your sense of identity, and then what other whatever others say, then you're really critical on yourself. So a strong negative mind with a weak a hunker. Yeah, it makes sense. Mohammed says, I admire your dedication to your teaching of the Waiguru. Yes. It, <laughs> thank you. Why? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm noticing it's challenging. Yeah, this the, to, to, to one of my main priorities with these courses is to find clarity and to bring clarity to these teachings. And it's not easy. Yeah, it, it's very challenging to, to make it simple and make it clear. And sometimes it's not easy because uh, the mind is not simple and clear. And to try to communicate what's happening in the mind in a simple and clear way, that's a big challenge. So <laughs> I appreciate your comment. I'll take an opportunity to hydrate. <laughs> <clears throat> So let's, let's forget about the title for a moment, but let's understand what this is. If a hunker in my, the, if the ego is weak and the negative mind is too strong, then I'm very hard on myself. If my ego is weak and the negative mind is also weak, then I, I don't know what I am, I don't know what I want. Remember, a hunker is the likes and the dislikes. I don't know what I like. I don't know what I dislike. This is, this is also something that we see very often when people are put in on the spot and ask their opinion and they don't say anything because they are afraid of offending people. And if they say something and they notice that you are not agreeing with them, they change their opinion very quickly. What the hell? Come on. <laughs> establish yourself. Establish your ideas. And, you know... We don't have to be obsessed and rigid about them. We can learn new ways of thinking, but why not say what you think? And this is the problem with a very weak, a hunker, like not knowing what you like, what you dislike, and not a very weak negative mind. Then somebody tells you something, you don't say no to that. You don't set up boundaries, and then that goes into your space, and then you, it infects your mind. And then you start thinking what they are telling you that you should be thinking. The, the, there is a number of forces in control of this world that they want you to be like this, like weak little sheep that just follow orders. Don't say no. So half a week negative mind and half a week a hunger just follow orders, right? Are you gonna are you gonna be weak or are you gonna be balanced and strong? And strong enough, not too strong, but strong enough. If you are strong enough in this, then you can be the manager. Hopefully that is helping to connect with why is it called manager. GIY says, if we are not our mind or thoughts, why value so highly the fluctuations of the mind to become balanced rather than being consciousness enough to be present as the thoughts arise? Ooh, okay. Yeah, that's lovely. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. But okay, listen, if you can do that, why you do? Go. <laughs> just be conscious, right? And just be present if a thought arises. But we do have a mind. And the mind is not balanced. And the ego, we have an ego. And as long as the ego is identified and addicted to what these beliefs, which are sometimes too strong, too weak, or the wrong kind, as long as we are addicted to that, we keep reacting and creating more karma. It would be wonderful if we could just quiet the fluctuations of the mind and just stop the, you know, just be aware and just reply from consciousness. But until we get there, we have an ego and it's often not balanced. We have manas and it's often distracted. We have buddhi and it's often asleep. And we need to wake up and we need to be balanced in every aspect. I think a great deal of the trick to be in that state that you are referring to, this stopping the fluctuations of the mind and awaking consciousness, is balancing the mind. Because when the mind is in balance, remember, mind captures the consciousness and it doesn't get it out. It doesn't let it out. So by 
balancing the mind is just like releasing the consciousness back. As long as we don't balance it, then we are going away with the mind. We could just do an, an exercise of self-inquiry, come back to the source and finding our center and just be radiating from the self. And if you can do that directly, why you do it, right? <laughs> then there's no problem. We don't have to do all this diagram, right? If you can just do that, do it. And if self-inquiry is enough, do it. If just meditating into yourself and breathing satnam is enough, do it. Wahiru. I'm speaking, if you have any sort of problem, <laughs> if you have any challenge in life, in setting boundaries with people, in, in, in choosing what is good and healthy for you, and having a healthy relationship to your diets, to your needs, to your, if you have any problem with that, then we have to talk about the mind, right? If you can just straight go into the self, why you do? If you have any challenge, then we have to balance first. So that's, that's why I'm making all this effort. I wish we could just sit in silence and just meditate. You know, like Ramana Maharshi, just sit in silence. And I could connect every day here in YouTube. I could do my live stream. And then we just sit. And you would connect your tablet and all of us, 8 billion people in the planet just in silence. And we would open our eyes and greet each other in silence and move around. We would not have to say anything. We would actually, we would actually have to say very little because we would understand each other at such a deep level. Words would be mostly unnecessary. So the world would be a very quiet place. And we would, everybody would do exactly what they need to do. I was... <laughs> sounds like sounds a little bit boring as well, <laughs> uh, probably. Uh, but we are not there. We are not Buddhas yet. Yet, maybe maybe it's in our path someday to become that. But until that, I find it useful to learn the, the many ways, the many traps, the many tricks, the many stones in our path that we can get tripped by. So that when we see them coming, you are not going to affect me. You are not going to take control of me. When I see somebody trying to manipulate me, it's become so clear now when somebody is trying to make me change my opinion by their attitude to make you feel guilty about feeling something or thinking something. You know what? I've been gaslighted enough. I've been dominated enough. I've been pressured enough to think in one particular way or another or to, to be afraid to say what I think. Enough. I said enough. I said enough. <laughs> and, <laughs> this makes me laugh because I'm not going to go through that. That's torture. How do we allow ourselves to be so weak? In, in, in a way, this is too weak a hunker, yeah? And just, you know, be a simp, be a, you know, just say hello, yes, 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 yes to everything. Come on, where is our integrity? Where is our strength? Where is our grit, right? So that's, that, <laughs> that's why I think this is useful. Makes total sense. Yes, experience this in a cave only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But look, every day we go a little bit to that cave. Every day we made it a little bit. Every day we go into that space, but not to escape the world just to solidify that sense of self so strong that when you feel somebody's trying to manipulate us, we can say, uh-uh-uh, then you set up the boundary. No, negative mind is going to set up the boundary. And being able to set up the boundary and having a good sense of identity and knowing who you are, you are a good manager at that place. Not only manager, let's see the other two. Yeah, let's go on, let's go on. All right, what are the other twos? If it's not the negative mind, if it's the positive mind, then that's a producer. And if it's the neutral mind, that's a leader. Yeah, producer, remember, positive mind is more concerned about how to project into the world. So what you are creating into the world, that's the producer. What you, from your sense of identity, are producing into the world. Yeah, make sense? And the neutral mind is about choose, choice about choosing. So from my established sense of identity, yeah, this is having good boundaries, this is being able to produce, and this is being able to choose. But not only do you choose for yourself, 
But if you have a good relationship to others through your sense of identity, then you become a leader as well. Yeah? So, ahankar is your sense of I amness, but we are all connected. Ekonkar, the moment that we are all connected, if I am from my sense of identity, a strong sense of identity, not too strong, but you know what is, what shouldn't, neutral mind, and then you can make a choice that is neutral, that choice, others are going to hear it, and they are going to sense the wisdom in that choice, and they're going to go on. Maybe wisdom is not the right word, because wisdom is already going into buddhi. But you see, buddhi is already being called, that, that's interesting, look, we went this way, up, we're going this way, up, and as, as you touch leader, buddhi is waking up. You see? Wisdom wants to come up. Just like this one, manas, defender artist strategies. As you are doing the strategy, ahankar is, is waking up, yeah? Because the manager is coming up. You see it's how it's connected? Producer, leader, as you are becoming a leader, buddhi is waking up. Yeah, the wisdom is, going, is coming up. So, leader, yeah? Okay, so let's see with buddhi. Are the buddhi, let's remember, buddhi is the awakened discerner, discernment and intuitive, yeah? Um, being awake and discerning and intuitive and wisdom, all those things mixed together. And that buddhi aspect, let, it helps to see, at least it helps me in this diagram. Now we are up here, right? We did negative, positive, neutral, negative, positive, neutral. Now we are here, negative, positive, neutral. Okay, what happens when we reach to that spot, hopefully in a healthy process, yeah, in a balanced process, and we reach to buddhi, and what would be the relationship now in buddhi with the negative mind? Well, in this book, this is called The Preserver. Let's put the names of the three. The, for the positive mind, this is called the missionary. And with the neutral mind, this is called the teacher. So, from the perspective of Buddhi, here, from whatever has happened, whatever I have perceived from the world, and knowing my identity, and what, you know, this is who I am and establishing my identity, now we come into buddhi and the negative mind, which wants to protect, is says, well, what needs to be preserved? Is concerned with preserving things. Let's read a little bit of the book. Let's see what the book says about this one. This is the third aspect. Qualities, negative mind times buddhi. So in the midst of all thoughts, emotions, and commotion, this aspect keeps you on the path. Well, that's a very short <laughs> explanation. I wasn't expecting it to be so short. Okay. <clears throat> well, if it keeps you on the path, because we are talking about buddhi. Remember, buddhi is the discernment, yeah? In the middle of everything else, discerning what it is, going to keep you in the path. But let's, let's read a little bit of what is too strong and too weak and balanced. Too strong. You can be a knack and a wise guy, always full of advice to correct the errors from other people. How interesting, right? A wise guy. Remember, buddhi is the wisdom. Yeah? But buddhi linked to negative in a too strong way, can you from your wisdom become negative to others? And rather than protect the others, which would be preserving, rather than that, you are a wise guy telling the others everything that they are doing wrong. Right? That's, that's a very strong buddhi and, and probably also strong negative mind, but too strong and not balanced, right? Or maybe it would be even the wrong kind, I would say. So it's not just negative or you know, too little, too much, or the wrong kind. It would be like the wrong kind of... Um, of of way to apply, to apply this wisdom, yeah? Um, some people read the, the yogic texts and they use them to hit on the head of other people, on the head, like, like, like taking the Bible or the Quran or whatever, take a spiritual teaching and start hitting on the head of other people with them. I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> First, let's use the wisdom for ourselves. 
Like we are not there yet. Like GIY was suggesting, you know, we haven't reached that state. So why don't we apply this for ourselves and we forget about trying to make everybody aware of how wise we are, right? <laughs> the wise guy. All right, let's carry on. You can become fixed on a solution that is not on the surface, sometimes far-fetched imaginings or ideologies that put you into an observant, safe, and judgmentally powerful position. Yeah, yeah. from the wisdom you, you see very far away, and then you are judgmental, like criticizing, saying, saying no to others in an unhealthy way. But let's say it's too weak. If it is too weak, you act too slowly to threats, especially ones that are evidenced by strong emotions or by future rather than immediate impacts. Instead of preserving you, ah, instead of preserving, you only salvage. Ah, okay. Okay. So it's not looking far away, not looking far enough, yeah? Not preserving for the future. Because remember, Buddhi is linked to a certain intuitive per intuitive, how did I say before? Discernment, yeah? Intuition is, is also perceiving what's coming in the future. So if this is too weak, if this Buddha is too weak, it's like I don't have this long view perception. And then this is what he's saying is that we salvage something instead of preserving it, right? We don't see the, the wisdom in conserving something that is going to be uh, healthy in the future. So we just eliminate it, saying no to it, negative mind. Yeah, that would be a, a strong negative mind and a very weak booty. That's what it would be. And um, a weak booty and a weak negative mind, I'm thinking now, it would be like not having this discernment, not be awakened in our discernment and intuition, not having it. And then um, whatever situation is there, not also being able to say no to what is coming. So you are not establishing boundaries, not this time with people. Um, it's also interesting that this is talking more about the future, right? Rather than when we were talking about the... Um, what was the other one that was establishing boundaries with the people around us? Wasn't it here? Insecurity, yeah, the, the, the second aspect. Sorry, let me, I thought it was showing. So here was about the, the boundaries that we set up with, with other people. But um, as we come here, this is also boundaries, right? This is boundaries one, two, three, yeah? And rather than with other people, look, this is with ourselves, this is with other people, and this is with the outside and the future. You can see this past, present, and future. And you could also see it like inner, between the inner and the outer, and the outer. You can, you can see, if it helps you, sometimes it can help, it, it's useful to see it in these ways as well. All right. So think about it in this way, too weak booty, too much, too strong, or the wrong kind of wisdom, yeah? Too weak the negative mind, too strong, or the wrong kind of negative mind applied to this aspect. And that's how we have these three. If we, the same with the missionary, if you are seeing which way things are going, because Buddha is this intuitive perception, intuition to see the future, remember? Present, past, present, future, right? And... Um, then you are like mm, you are seeing a direction in which things could be going. This is a, like an intuitive perception. Where is this going? And then you want to project in that way. That's the missionary. Yeah, the positive mind projection and action. How to move in that direction? And the neutral is having the wisdom and the perception and intuition from the neutral perspective. This is the teacher. This is the realm of where the teacher lives. Yeah, being able to adapt to any situation discernment and where things are going but don't try to project too much forward like the missionary but staying neutral in the middle staying in the center should we read a little bit of the teacher the teacher is an interesting aspect it's interesting for me I am a teacher so I'm, I am curious about what he says 
When balanced, the teacher is impersonally personal. That means neutral, right? It starts with absolute awareness and a neutral assessment from that awareness. That the awareness, the awareness comes from the body, yeah? And the neutral awareness is from here. It uses intuition to know directly what is real and what is a diversion. And the neutral mind means that you respond both with the positives and the negatives. Neutral, you can have the chance to operate from both. Buddhi mind means you are clear about the purpose and the laws of each action. And a complete teacher is not an instructor. A teacher is not expression of infinity for the benefit of all. It's also not a preacher. Yeah? The missionary is much more of a preacher. This is more like a teacher. Yeah? This is go going outside of yourself, projection outside, to try to make people see the wisdom. This is a staying neutral. I'm staying neutral, but I'm still going to be true to the wisdom. Yeah. All right. Hopefully, hopefully it became more clear now. Even if you don't agree with the titles, or even if you could find different titles, which I'm sure you could, and we could even link these archetypes to other um, systems of archetypes that you may have studied, or maybe um, you read from other authors, like I don't know, I'm thinking Junk, Carl Jung, or somebody else. You could, you could explore um, things like the myth of the hero, you know, the path of the hero, and, and which of the different aspects of this are there in the hero. And uh, that could be very interesting work as well to do. But if you, even if you don't agree with the titles or you want to find your own titles, as long as it's clear this, there's three ways we mess up too little, too, too much the wrong kind. And, um, or we can be in balance. And then we have these three aspects, Manas and Hankar Buddhi. All of them can be imbalanced or balanced. And we have negative, positive, neutral, balanced or balanced. And then by finding the cross, you're going to experience these different aspects. Now, if you find yourself that it is difficult for you in your relationship to the producer aspect, or the leader, right, or the teacher, then oh, you know now in which quadrant this is, and you know how you have to work on yourself. Is it on the Buddhi area? Is it on the neutral mind era, area? And how you can balance that particular aspect. Okay, so these nine aspects, let's go into the times three now. If there is no question or comment, otherwise you can write in the comments. But then Yogi Bhajan says, look, so this, there is these nine archetypes. Okay, good, fair enough. But the archetypes are, are like ways of thinking, yeah? And, and still, out of that ways of thinking, we, we are going to decide what kind of action are we going to take into the world. How, what is going to be our attitude? And then what's going to be our action? So there's going to be like three levels, yeah? from the way of thinking, kind of going into the more insight, into the body, into the what kind of attitude is kind of like going down into the heart, kind of going into our feelings and emotions more, connecting more with our emotions, because this is like thought, emotions, and physical action. So it's like body, emotions, and, and mind. Yeah, body and mind, mo sorry, body, emotions, mind, spirit. Right? So out of the spirit, there's this essence coming down, but then there's the mind is creating all this complex grid of nine aspects. Now, whatever archetype from the mind is being active, now what's going to be our attitude towards what we are going to be doing at the end? What's going to be our action at the end? But before we go into the action, we're going to have another check, another check with the negative, positive, and neutral. So, you see, the defender is negative times manas, but there are different kinds of defender. And that's going to be a negative kind of defender, a positive kind of defender, or, ne or a neutral kind of defender. You see how easy this is going to be compli complex? It's going to get more complex, but look, this is what the mind does. The mind complicates things, probably overcomplicates things. Yeah, But this is, this is why... Um, I said the important thing is that you understand how this matrix is formed and then from here you can just 
uh, learn to deal with that. However, if you want to go deeper into the into the understanding the mind, we're going to go one level more. We're not going to go to the all the way down, but we're going to go one more level. Now, uh, nine aspects times three, this is going to be 27 projections. Yeah, nine aspects, 27 projections. Now, don't worry too much now. Now let's just take, for example, one of these aspects and let's say, well, defender, okay. Now, the situation is happening in life. I have some issue. Maybe I have to involve some lawyers. Maybe I need to... Somebody has accused me or something and I find I need to defend myself. Okay, what kind of defender are you going to be? How are you going to be the defender? So you can be a defender from the negative, from the positive, or from the neutral mind. Again, right? Having activated the defender realm within me, in my consciousness, it's not, it's not about man as a hankar and booty anymore, because it's not about the outside world, or my. it's about being a defender, but now, how is my negative, positive, and neutral in relationship to the defender? So there's going to be three different responses and three different defenders, three different ways to defend. So I'm going to use three different colors. How can I do this? I will use green. I will use red. And I will use... pink. In this order, negative, positive, and neutral. Well, let's just write the names first. Soldier, Ombudsman, and Prospector. Oh, that's too similar. The pink is too similar to the red. Let me use purple. Prospector. All right. So in this, uh, in this book, we find that not only there is an explanation for the aspect that we were looking, You see? Aspect one, the defender. But now it's telling you, look, there is actually three different projections. And when all three projections are balanced, they support the function of the aspect to align with your real purpose to see things as they are. So out of the defender come three different projections. Remember? Projections. And every projection has its own page. So if you want to go with the book, you, you, can, you can check every one of the projections uh, independently. Look, I, I'm not getting any money for selling this book, all right? I'm not, I'm, <laughs> it, it looks kind of like a, they are um, sponsoring me. <laughs> it's not. Um, I think the book is very interesting and useful. There's lovely meditations in it. And, uh, and then you don't have to buy the book if you don't want, if you want to just understand the principles, I think with the video should be enough to understand the principles and then you can apply them your own way. But if you want to go and buy the book, I'm just trying to explain how, how to read it and also to understand these three different aspects. So let's go into these three aspects. Sorry, the three projections. The aspect is the defender and then there is the soldier, ombudsman and prospector. We're, we're going to do a little bit of this just as an example. I'm not going to go all the way down the rabbit hole. I'm just going to use a little bit of an example. Well, this pro the projection of the soldier comes from the negative mind. It assumes that you are personally at risk and whatever challenges you do so with an intentional... Oh, whatever challenges you does so with you as an intentional target. So they are coming for me. Yeah? So this is a threat. So if I have to activate the defender, 
then I am in danger and I have to defend personally, there's a threat for me, then that's the soul. That's the negative mind saying, no, no, it's for me. I have to defend for myself. Ombudsman, it's the positive mind. Yeah, It's a defender applying the positive mind. So everything just needs a fix up. Take all the pieces and find what is useful. Find an advantage in this situation. Catalog what you did wrong so that you won't do the same in the future. Discover what you didn't do that will protect you later. Identify, fix, and use. Look, it, fix, fixing, the fix-up, the fixer, this is the language of the positive mind. Remember, the positive mind wants to help you, right? So this is the defender that is trying to help. And generally, it's more about others. And that's why it's called ombudsman. Ombudsman is a funny little word. I had to check it in the dictionary the first time I heard it, and also the second one, and also the third time I heard it, <laughs> because I keep forgetting what ombudsman means. Uh, but it's somehow, as far as I understand, it's like, like the defender of the people. Like uh, if you are... Um, if, you, if, if you feel that some maybe maybe you went to a shop and they tricked you and they um they promised that they would do something for you but that they didn't they didn't follow the contract or they cheated you in some way what are you going to do are you going to bring them to court well you can go to the city council at least here in portugal right and just and you can denounce that to the people who defend the people. Yeah, this is ombudsman is like defenders of the people are called uh, defenders. Yeah, of the of the or defenders of the town. Sometimes they are called defensor do, po do povo. I should guess. Uh, I I think it's called like the defender of the town. And so that you can you can denounce these people who did this, and then they can defend you and they can help. Yeah. So you see, the positive mind wants to help, and um, and then um, so. In, in the soldier, remember, the soldier would be the negative mind, so this is personally against me. The ombudsman is the positive mind, so it's helping with others. And, but also, like, um, what did I do that is going to affect others? How can I, can I, can I learn from that? How can, how can it help? So John is asking, negative, positive, and neutral in each box? That's right, that's right. So every one of the archetypes is going to, again now manifest as a negative, positive, or neutral. So there is a negative mind kind of defender, there's a positive mind kind of defender, there's a neutral mind kind of defender. Exactly. And, and the prospector, let's read it. <clears throat> if you know your purpose and goal, you can prospect for what is useful and what is not. This is again what the neutral mind does, what is useful and what is not. Every coincidence is a large pattern in action. Relax and see beyond the surface to catch useful currents and be in the best position to act intelligently. Yeah, every coincidence is a large pattern in action. Relax and see beyond the surface to catch useful currents and be in the best position to act intelligently. So beyond the surface, this is the neutral mind, yeah? And coincidences like the patterns, seeing the patterns, this is the neutral mind. It's called, uh, here, it's called how to deal with a coincidence. Yeah. Let's see if there's something interesting. When balanced, you are an excellent financial officer, legal strategist, and cross-examiner. You keep everyone straight and notice things others do not as you show intelligence and strategy vision capacity. Well, it's mixing a number of things now because, I mean, intelligence is a different factor. I wouldn't bring it in necessarily. But, um, but yeah, uh, applying neutrality in the defense. So you are going to be the defender, but you have to prospect, you have to examine, you have to evaluate, and then from neutrality, you know, a good cross-examiner, you know, the keeping, keeping neutral, yeah? All right. Um, Okay. So I don't want to do like this for every one of them. That I think that would be too much. And I'm going to write their names so that you can relate to them uh, in your own way. But let's say the negative mind for the manager, 
that's called the historian. Concern about identity, which is coming from the past. Yeah, this negative mind is also about the past. Yeah, and then the runner. I'm just going to write the names and then everyone you check by yourself. Yeah, because otherwise this video is going to be like, it's already almost two hours. Imagine if I, if I have to explain everything, it's going to be too much. Not that I understand everything. So, uh, and to me, some of these names, they are a bit confusing, but, um, in, uh, in the level two Kundalini Yoga, we explore every one of them. We do all the meditations and we are, um, understanding why they are in balance or out of balance. But I think it would be too much to explore today. Devotee. This is the scout. The protector. Educator. The positive man, ombudsman, chameleon. Yeah, changing, being able to change your sense of identity according to the situation. This is the positive mind, remember? So this is negative, this is positive, and this is neutral, right? Not to confuse. So chameleon is the positive mind. An integrator. The doer. Architect, the enthusiast, the coach, commander, expert. Just bear with me. I'm just going to finish the list and then I will explain something. The judge. The apost apostle, 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 yeah. What's this? Originator, entrepreneur, the creator, the guide. Pathfinder and the master. All right, this is the whole list. I I don't want to explore all of it. I don't I don't even think you have to explore all of it. I think if you understand the concept, then you und then that's that's the basis of it. Um, if it was a training, a level two training in Kundalini Yoga, what we would do is we would first check. And we would make one meditation for every aspect, for the nine aspects. And then out of the aspect that you feel that is weaker, let's say your weakest aspect is the artist, then you would check which is the projection that is the weakest within the weakest aspect. And sometimes you realize that as an artist, you are not bad originator and you are not bad doer, but you are a bad actor. Then, then you can take the actor and you can do the meditation specific for this one. And you do it for 90 days. And then you see the effect of balancing this one is going to help balance this aspect. It's, it's just a simple procedure in that case. But um, so I mentioned there is these 27 projections and then this is complicated. This is going to be even more times three creating 81 facets. I'm going to stop. I'm not going to do times three, times three, times three, right? It's just you have to imagine that the 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 brain, the mind, is like a big diamond. Can I draw a diamond now? Uh, something like this. Right, with all these facets. Something like that. Does it look like a diamond? Hopefully. And uh, you see, facets are is a word that is used to describe one of the faces, the the faces of the diamond. So, it's how are you looking at it? So you can see the mind. How is the mind? How you can look at the mind? And depending on what's happening, what comes in through manas, then it's going to trigger 
negative, positive, neutral. We're going to go into a hankar. We're going to go to booty. And all these archetypes are going to be active. And these archetypes then are going to, we're going to have from the archetypes, from the aspects are going to go into three pro, times three, negative, positive, or neutral, one particular projection of those, of these. And then again, so for example, you go into soldier. Soldier, there's going to be a negative mind kind of soldier, positive mind kind of soldier, neutral mind kind of soldier, you know, like neutral is the one who is choosing the plan of attack. Positive mind is the one that is going to go against the enemy. Neutral mind is the one who is going to be, sorry, negative mind is going to be setting up defenses, right? And creating like a castle and like there is a, with the water around it, right? So what kind of soldier are you? Negative mind, positive now, or, ne or neutral mind? And the same with every one of these. You could take the ombudsman. What kind of ombudsman are you? What kind of prospector are you? What kind of guide or coach or scout? Yeah, what kind of expert are you? What kind of architect? Negative, positive, or neutral? So you take this producer, then you go here, negative, positive, neutral, and then you would go inside and find three more things. <laughs> yeah, negative, <laughs> positive, and neutral on every one of these projections. And that's how 27 times 3 becomes 81. And this is what is called like the 81 phases, the 81 phases of the diamond. It's a, it's a long path to explain this. But at the end of the day, it's not so difficult to understand. It's, it's very complex, but not difficult. It's complex because the mind is complex, because the mind likes to complicate things. And all this is happening within our mind, and some situation arises, and we start twisting and turning, and, and then the diamond turns, and we show one of the facets into the world. And then the diamond turns, and we show another one, right? And that's how we operate in the world. But at the end of the day, we have to remember this is is much simpler than this. Negative, positive, neutral. A hunker manas buddhi. Can I have all of these six? Can they be balanced by themselves? And in their relationship, whatever situation is happening, can they be balanced? So if anybody feels inspired to get the book, you can get the book and do the meditations. Um, otherwise, at least I I hope that you understood the different concepts and that you can. Um, find easily what is the one that is out of balance to learn how to balance it. And um, a balanced mind is going to be more in service for me to be in my state of consciousness, in consciousness, right? Rather than being influenced negatively by being too weak, too strong, or the wrong kind of any one of these aspects that are just going to be creating more reactions, therefore more karma, and therefore life becomes harder. So that was a long job. I'm already tired just from thinking about the mind. I can imagine it was already enough for you as well. Uh, before I close, let me just say we are almost finishing with the mind course, but I'm thinking I'm going to add a, a few, maybe one or two, on, on not just the theory of how the mind works, but now the practice on what to do, how, how to balance some of these different aspects of the mind and how to deal with an unwanted thought and things like that. And I didn't forget, we promised to do one video on artificial intelligence and talk about um, this ChatGPT and how does this affect us, uh, particularly as the yogis. So I think that will be also something for the future coming up. Thank you, John. Thank you for uh, your message. And um, so I'll just, I'll just remind if anybody wants to support the channel, you can now join and uh, not just subscribe, but you can also join if anybody wants to support economically, then there's different levels of membership. And for those who were asking me for the diagrams, then I will uh, share the diagrams that I have and the, the ones that I draw like this every day um, in the course, I can take a picture and I will share it with those who are uh, members from, I think it's like tier three upwards. And um, thank you very much for being here anyway. And, uh, and I hope to see you next time. Uh, this week I'm going to connect on Friday. And then and before that, I'm going to put in the community tab all the dates that I'm going to be for, January, for February. And, um, and so hope to see you in any of those live streams uh, that are coming. Thank you very much. Saddam, take care.